Stay cool. Yeah, that's right. Welcome to Asteroid Challenge Fight Club. This is space. There's space all over the place. I need your love. This is a Thor News presentation. Hit the button, baby. I am the Indiana Jones of astronomy. And here we go. Mariner's TV cameras sent back views of Mercury's surface surprisingly resembling that of our moon. Mercury, why are you so dark? The Christian Science Monitor asks, why is the planet's surface so dark? This is a great mystery of Mercury. Over at Gizmodo, they're like, oh dude, we finally know why Mercury is so dark. That's exciting, right? We all would love it when scientists figure out crap. Like why Mercury's pencil lead dust? It's cause Mercury has pencil lead crust. All right, all right, all right. And this one here, this guy's bold. They must not get a lot of ad from science. Scientists may have discovered why Mercury is such a bitch. <sighs> Just kidding, Mercury, you're not a bitch. Let's get a physics out of work, because they're freaking official. We're taking a tour of our solar system this weekend at Thor News. Ain't that grand. Physics.org. Discovery of carbon on Mercury reveals the planet's dark past. And remember, Mercury is the first planet out from the sun in our solar system. Or as I like to call it, Mercury is the sun's moon. See, what happened was, when our solar system was formed, Jupiter and the sun made a friendship pact. They smoked a peace pipe and they traded moons. So Jupiter gave the sun Mercury and then the sun gave Jupiter Io. Pretty cool science you won't hear anywhere else. Okay, maybe it's not science, maybe it's imagination. Either way, something fun to think about that I made up. I'm cool like that. All right, this article was written March 9th by Ivy Sith. Discovery of carbon on Mercury reveals the planet's dark past. Man, modern science is obsessed with darkness. Let's begin this, the conversation. This enhanced color image shows the traces of carbon on the surface, colored here in blue. Credit NASA, Johns Hopkins University, Applied Physics Laboratory, Carnegie Institute in Washington. All right, and the great thing is, if, if you're starting out as a brand new professional scientist, somebody ever asks you a question, remember, if it's on Earth, the answer is probably ice crystals. If it's in outer space, the answer is either carbon or methane. So if you're in a bind, go with that rule, and you usually prove yourself right. Mercury has been found to have a dark side with graphite, a crystalline form of carbon commonly found in pencils. Sweet. I still like pen and paper. I'm old school. I think there's a lot of power in pen and paper. I like to write. I like to sketch. I like to draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you didn't know, Thor, Thor News, me, is a poet at heart. Love is stronger than the stars in the sky. Love shall never die. All right, now that I've lost a half of my audience, let us continue. Being the source of the mysterious dark coloration of the planet's surface. <laughs> I really screwed that up. Let me read it fast. Mercury has been found to have a dark side with graphite, a crystalline, a crystalline form of carbon commonly found in pencils being the source of the mysterious dark coloration of the planet's surface. I thought it was so dark because it's like a chunk of charcoal floating around the sun. You know what I'm saying? So if the sun needs to cook any foods, uh, Mercury will add delicious planetary flavor. Um, the study published this week in Nature Geoscience was led by a team from the John Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory in the U.S., which analyzed measurements collected by NASA's messenger spacecraft as it went through its final orbits of Mercury. The findings not only tested theories of early planetary formation, but may offer an explanation of the amount of carbon here on Earth. Very, very interesting. You see, what it is is that science is ultimately trying to build a pie out of the materials of the very origin of our solar system. Remains of a primordial crust. The surface color of planetary bodies is often an indicator of the elements that make them up. Yeah, it's just like that with human beings. Like, if you see a white dude or woman, that person is usually made up of whipped cream. If you see a black man or woman, that person is usually made up of chocolate. If you see an Asian person, that person is usually made up of cotton candy. If they're from, like, Japan, it's like banana cotton ca candy. If they're from China, it's like cherry cotton candy. And if they're from Thailand, it's like a mix. It's like watermelon cotton candy. And if you see Spanish people, they're usually made up of maple fudge. Life is really that simple, people. All right, <laughs> what are we talking about? Damn. Hello. Welcome to the weekend. It's Thor's day, and I'm kicking your ass in a hilarious way, bringing you what science is telling me. All right. People are like, don't believe what NASA says. They tell our lies. I'm like, look, dude, I ain't believing nothing. I'm just reading the article, making jokes, leaving it up to you what to believe and not believe. And if I don't believe what you believe and that bothers you, oh no, my heart it breaketh. The surface color of planetary bodies is often an indicator of the elements that make them up. Lame. Not buying it. For example, the distinctive rusty red appearance of Mars can be attributed to iron oxide. Well, hey, dude. Iron oxide, plan X, bearing down on us. Giant cloud dust, red. Rusty dusty. Yeah, I don't know. They showed an article saying that, like, Mars is blue. So, blow me. Away w with your science. It had previously been believed that the iron and titanium 
were typically responsible for the dark coloration on planetary surfaces. However, Mercury is quite dark, but lacked high enough concentrations of those elements to account for its color. All right, Mercury's made of pencils, everybody. Mercury's made of number two pencils. That explains it all. Are you writing this shit down? It may come up on a test later. Why is Mercury so dark? Because it's made of number two pencils. And it explains why lead has seen such high inflation over the last 15 years. Wait, no, reverse that. That was supply and demand. No, wait, reverse that. Our entire economic system is totally foobar. Mercury's surface was significantly darker than we could account for on the basis of our understanding of Mercury's surface chemistry. Why don't we just land a probe or a lander on there and scrape some of that crap up? A. Mercury's really close away. B. We landed on comets before asterisk. Why not send stuff to Mercury? Just make it out of some material that ain't gonna melt, bro. You know what I mean? If Ulysses went up above and around the sun, we got something that can land and stay on Mercury, right? It might get eaten by the vampires I threw there 7,000 years ago. So I imagine they're hungry by now and will eat just about anything. But you know, those are, those are risks you take with the job of being a probe. By carefully examining data sent back to Earth by the messenger probe, the team found that the dark coloration, the team found that the dark coloration was due to the presence of carbon, with Mercury having high levels than any other planets or their moons. Wait, data? Why don't you just scoop some crap up, bring it back? Maybe they, because that would cause like Mercury zombie virus, I guess. The discovery of carbon on Mercury was an unexpected one. Really? Like everything's made up of carbon these days. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it's either ice crystal or carbon. Scientists get surprised way too easily. So much so that none of the instruments on Messenger were designed to detect the element. Instead, Peplowski and his colleagues had to use multiple instruments to identify the carbon. There's a need for continued planetary exploration by robots. F humans, man. But science is theory, not mine. I love humans. And I think if you want to inspire people, put humans in rockets and have them walk around other planets. I'll tell them funny jokes and play on guitar. All right. The discovery gives weight to a theory on how Mercury is formed. The carbon-rich material was detected underneath younger volcanic materials that make up Mercury's present-day surface. This suggests that early Mercury's original rich crust may have been formed from graphite that floated to the top of the global magma ocean. Yeah, sure, believe that. Believe whatever you want. Man, I still like the idea that Mercury is made of pencils. These primordial floating crusts provide a rare perspective on early planetary formation. Well, it sounds like we're one step closer to that primordial pie science is trying to make. The carbon we see today may be the remains of that ancient 4.5 billion year old crust. See what I'm saying? Like some giant evil scientist just trying to make some billion dollar primordial pie. That's why we're doing everything. It'll have like dark matter frosting and dark energy pudding. It'll taste like hell and turn you into some type of interdimensional demon. We don't want that, do we? The next planetary exploration of Mercury could provide further answers, with the European Space Agency launching the Bepi Colombo probe to Mercury next year. It has an entirely new suite of instruments that can add to our understanding of carbon on Mercury. Well, yay! That sounds exciting. This lady, Dr. Helen Maynard Casely, was not involved in the study. She said the study sheds light on some of the long-standing mysteries in planetary science. She added that the theory they study suggests that how Mercury evolved shares many similarities to the early formation of the moon. <coughs> Bullshit. <coughs> Bullshit. Rocks smashed into each other and then attained hydrostatic equilibrium in space slowly over time. <laughs> Can I have my biscuit now? Carbon's been a very tricky element to pin down, even on Earth. And it is a puzzle to discover what has happened to our carbon. Wait, what? There's a thought now that a lot of the carbon on Earth is trapped further down within the interior and that we are missing a lot of minerals. Hmm. Really? There's currently a bit of a worldwide hunt for these. When I thought the problem was too much carbon, and if carbon's coming from underground like in volcanoes and shit, then that would turn science on its ear, right? Uh-oh, did I just get myself in trouble? No, nobody listens to me. Anyway, I love you. I'm gonna take my mercury pencil and go write a sad poem now. Peace out. God bless everyone. We're taking a tour of our solar system this weekend at Thor News. Ain't that grand. If you'd like to watch my video on Mars, click here. If you'd like to watch my video on Mercury, click here. If you'd like to watch my video on Mock Mars, click here. If you'd like to watch my video on Planet 9, click here. There's another planet, I think. If you'd like to watch my video, on, a new video on Pluto, click here. If you want to watch a potluck video, click here. If you don't think I'm a cool guy, click here.